Hello, welcome back. Another tutorial. Brent Nelson here. This is uh, in FlexSim, and I want to show you the different processors that you can have in your system. So these are the different um, fixed resources that you can add that will work on the material that you've now introduced into your system. I'm going to start with the most basic um, processor. It's simply called processor. It's this <laughs> generic, fairly ugly, a conveyor belt looking kind of thing. All right. So we've already talked about having a source to bring the material in and a processor must draw material from a queue. You can't feed it straight with a conveyor. It, it needs to be able to pull its material from a queue um, when it's ready. Right? As, as it's processing, it can't, it can't handle another part. It can only introduce one piece at a time. So here uh, is the detail for the processor. Maximum content, one. So second only hand one, one at a time, but you can have it, for example, be able to accommodate two pieces on the belt. Then you can define a setup time. I've got mine set to minutes, but you can set up, do a setup in seconds or take it longer. So you could have, uh, for example, a one minute setup time and then processing time. I've changed it already from the default. I think the default is 10 minutes or 10. And I'm going to, just for purposes of my demonstration to make it run a little faster, set a processing time of one minute. Okay. I'm going to leave the default, send to port, first available. Because from the processor, it needs to go somewhere. And this, again, is where you can use a queue or a storage unit or a conveyor belt in this case. Uh, for material to flow past the processor. But it needs to go somewhere once once the processor's done with it. It needs to have a destination. A multiprocessor, that is the further down in the list over here, multiprocessor is essentially the same as a processor. It takes in um, a piece at a time or multiple pieces at a time, depending on your setting and does work on it. These things are very generic. You define what the work is, painting, welding, drilling, milling, bending, forming, shaping, cutting, you know, stirring, mixing, anything you want, right? These are just generic. Um, okay, and the difference between the multiprocessor and the processor is with the multiprocessor, we can have it do more than one operation in the same machine. I'm going to come down here again where it says multiprocessor. This is where we're going to define the multiprocessor specific tasks or actions. And the default would be here, one process one, processing time again. And the difference here is I can hit the plus button and I've already done so for this little setup. But when you can hit the plus button, then it'll add subsequent processes. So process number two, I can set up a different setup time. Process number three, for example, maybe I want this to be a longer process. Uh, so, right, so process one, process two, process three, three minutes. And you can rename these uh, for, for clarity. Instead of just calling it process one, two, three, uh, you can have it uh, rough turning, deburring, second turing, you can have uh, milling a face, milling a side, milling second face, whatever makes sense in your particular process. Okay. And, and then this is going to send out to the port. I've thought this would be a good place to just to show that you can send uh, material from more than one machine to one queue. Now, you have to decide if this makes sense for your particular model to have things coming from different machines, um, but you have that flexibility, right? Whatever makes sense in your particular model. Okay. Now I want to talk about separator. A separator is a little bit unique in that it's, it still acts like a processor receives material, but the one thing uh, it, it can be used for two different cases. So the first one here, um, you can 
I'm uh, uh, in the separator properties window just to show you. And I've picked the separator mode is split. Uh, what this means is that for every piece that comes in, it can create multiple pieces uh, on the output side. And the quantity then is defined by this uh, sort of formula. Now, where I tend to use separators is um, I have students who like to do, say, uh, producing jeans or clothing. So you would get in something made uh, like a roll of cotton or um, a sheet of rubber, or uh, you could bring in some wood uh, planks or something like that. And then this is like a cutting operation, cutting or stamping, something like that. And so if you bring in a sheet of rubber and you stamp it, you would get, say, you know, a dozen or 20 smaller pieces that would come out. And so you would have this sort of statistically for every unit, every sheet or strip or kilogram or pound or whatever of material coming in, you would typically get whatever, 20 pieces, but it'd be give or take a little bit. And that's where I think a normal distribution is kind of nice. So if you pick normal, then it's very helpful. It just pops up as well, what, what's your mean? And say 10 pieces, uh, standard deviation, two pieces. You can change this to anything we want. We can say, uh, expect to get five pieces with a standard deviation of one. So five plus or minus three standard deviations is going to cover pretty much the full range of what we'd expect as the output. And you can see that, right, the, <laughs> since I've been letting this run, the separator has created quite a lot of material on its, on the output. So this is very, very useful as if you have something coming in and it gets pulled apart into smaller chunks. Okay. And I'm going to deal in a future lecture or a future video here. Um, right now I haven't played with any of the shapes except pick, pick different defaults. And, and so what we really to sell this as a convincing thing, we would change both the look of the separator, but we'd also change the look of the output piece. We'd, it doesn't make sense for it to take in a cylinder of this size and output a cylinder of the same size. The combiner uh, is a, another unique kind of a device that takes in multiple pieces and combines them into single units. So it's sort of the opposite of a separator. And um, it has a couple of different modes as well. Uh, so the two that I would suggest sticking with is pack and join. I've defined it as a pack operation. And from input part, this is the default, from input port two, which happens to be this one, the target quantity is 12. So I'm going to take 12 of whatever shows up here and put it in, put it inside or pack into whatever comes into the first queue. So here I've defined this to be a small cylinder where this I've chosen. This is where either the palette or the tote and this is where either the palette or the tote are good choices. So in my case here, I've sort of defined the cylinder to be small enough to fit a dozen of them into a tote. So now do it just a quick reset and run. And you can see then it's been drawn right away in, uh, but you have the tote and it's slowly packing these cylinders one at a time as they arrive. Once it's got 12, then it will pass this into the, oh, I see <laughs> it's, it's sent them on already to the, to my next operation, but you could also do a join operation. So if this is more like an assembly, then you would use a combiner in its join operation and it would uh, take in 
pieces from multiple sources, join them together and output a single unit. And so that would be perfect at representing an assembly sort of an operation. This is where I can demonstrate my separator. So, so you can already see what's going on. Instead of the split operation I showed you before, here I'm picking it as an unpack. And I've chosen to unpack the entire contents. Um, you can have it unpack just two pieces and then pass it along. Um, here, and that could be feasible for your model, but for me, I've just chosen uh, sort of the simpler option to unpack everything. So this will unpack the entire contents instead of just unpacking a number. Again, there's a setup time and a processing time to do it. Uh, and the default separator option is like this, where the um, container goes to one output and the contents goes to the other output. You've got lots of options about the kind of um, processor that you want to choose. These are all found in the fixed resources, the processor, the combiner, the separator, and the multiprocessor. Again, hope you found this useful. Good luck building your model. I'll see you in the next tutorial.